Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis, and it's good to have you with us. Wow, it's a Tuesday, but it feels like a Monday. I think uh, Benji Escobar, my co-host, has brought us bad luck this morning. We've had a few technical issues, but Benji, it's good to see you on the show, and uh, I understand you have an interesting lunch today. Show us exactly what you plan on dining on today. Um, I plan on dining on four mangoes. Okay, and so you like mango Cholula hot sauce. And Cholula hot sauce. Okay, all right, all right. Yeah, so this episode is brought to you by mangoes, a good source of vitamin C. Are you literally eating all those mangoes today? Like, may, maybe. I'll probably eat one, but you never know. After okay. you eat one, you want to... Are you at home or at the station? <clears throat> I am an, at an in, undisclosed location. No, I'm, oh. I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, I got it. Got it. Girlfriend's house. Okay, no problem. No problem. Tell her we say hi, you know. So look at your background. Look at that's beautiful right there. You like that? Yeah, that's from my old apartment. Yeah, you get some nice. Yeah, you get some nice backgrounds. Yeah, I live in a cave right now near downtown. Doesn't look like this at all. Um, it, over, it overview. It oversees the dumpster right now. So I don't have this type of view before. That's why I have to look at these pictures. Uh, you know, we want to thank everyone watching us on Facebook and YouTube. We are here most mornings. HCC is in session live at 10 a.m. And uh, Benji, they can always catch us in social media as well. Yeah, we are live on Houston Community College District Facebook page, not HCC, but Houston Community College District. We're also on YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and we have our own TV channel uh, where we can catch a rebroadcast of this show at noon, 5 and 10 p.m. on Monday through Friday. Yep. Okay. You can do that. Uh, so we've got another special guest who's getting set up now. He's at the Central College, so we'll be checking in with him in just a little while. But right now, we want to uh, welcome back to the show. Um, we've got Chris Williams, the executive chef and co-founder of Lucille's Fine Southern Foods. It's Tasty Tuesday. Chris, welcome back to the show. I'm going to let Benji take things away, but it's always good to see you, and we appreciate you being here. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, so welcome back to the show, Chef. Um, thank you for joining us again. Uh, last time you were here, uh, just over a little, over a little, oh, <laughs> a little over a year ago, we talked about Lucille's being a tribute to your grandmother, Lucille B. Smith, um, right? Yeah, my great grandmother. Yeah, um, awesome. So before we get into some of your new plans, can you remind our viewers of the journey, uh, your journey to open up this place? Uh, sure. Um, Lucille's just celebrated her 10th anniversary. We've been working on the, the, the building for 12 years. We just purchased the land that, that the restaurant lives on, uh, I think last year. Well, and so when we found the space, we wanted to come up with something that really um, uh, spoke to not only the location, because the old house was built in 1927, but also that gave us uh, focus from a culinary uh, perspective. Um, so naming after my great grandmother was was perfect because that gave us that direction that we needed and also gave us a wonderful story, which ultimately turned into the ethos of everything that we do. Okay, and so how would you describe the look of your place and your food? And uh, can you tell us a little bit of the menu items you have? Yeah, so the look of the place is, um, <clears throat> you know, it's it, it is a house that was built in 1927 that was you know, at one point a segregated speakeasy and then it had a bunch of different lives. And so I essentially just gutted it and turned it into what you see today. So hardwood floors, all the old bones, the original bones are still there. Uh, we have a great bar. The food is uh, described as um, Southern cuisine with global influences. So I worked all through Europe for four years and um, up and down the East Coast and Canada for a couple of years. And so all those flavors and techniques that I picked up while I was traveling through Europe have found their way into <clears throat> the dishes that we do at Lucille's. And when I say um, Southern cuisine, Southern is really defined by the ingredients that we use, right? So we're in the South, so we try to stay focused on ingredients that come from the South. And, and then the global part is the manipulation that we do to those ingredients. Um, a dish that, you know, and so for like, as far as the range of what you would see, uh, you have everything from like the Carolina shrimp and grits to, <clears throat> excuse me, um, braised octopus with a nakamon vinaigrette and mm -hmm. uh, roasted peanuts and cilantro uh, salsa verde. So it's kind of all over the place. Okay. So now moving on to your future plans, um, what can you tell us about 
um, something you're opening up in late August of 2023? Yeah. So the name of the restaurant is, is Late August. That's the name. Of oh, it. okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to happen. I thought was reading Okay. Yeah, no, I was I, reading it as. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, uh, yeah. So it's opening in late April. The name is okay. Late August. Um, and that's going in the Ion building, which used to be the Sears building. And I came up with the name late August when I was researching the history of the Sears Roebuck Company. <clears throat> and so they were like uh, such amazing capitalists that they desegregated the shopping experience for all of America. And they were essentially like Amazon before Amazon, the same infrastructure. Uh, yeah. But they just did all their work through catalogs that were delivered to everybody. Um, my personal experience with the Sears catalog was the Christmas catalog to where you, you, know, you get the thing and you circle every single thing in the, in the book and you give it to your parents and then you have they have, you know, four months to disappoint you because you're only going to get one or two things from the catalog. <laughs> um, but I was trying to find out when that catalog came out, <clears throat> and it came out in late August. So that's the, that's why we named the restaurant Late August. So it's like homage to the history of um, that and those good feelings that were conjured up around um, that, that, you know, that, 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 that little event, as I would call it. Um, it's going to be led by Chef Don Burrell, who is... Um, who was a finalist on top on on Top Chef season nineteen, mm -hmm. wow. and is one of the guest judges on season twenty. Uh, she's also, without a doubt, the best chef that I've ever experienced anywhere in the world. That's and I've, great. You know, taken years consuming Michelin stars, just trying to learn more about my craft, mm -hmm. and what we do, and when I tell you this woman is the best, um, she is hands down the best. I cannot wait until this restaurant opens. It's going to be a study of. Um, it's really, I guess the best way to put it, cause we're going through the tasting now, but it's more like, a conversational cuisine, mm -hmm. I guess that's a way to put it to where it's like, th these dishes are so good. You don't want that traditional experience to where you go and say, I'm going to order the shrimp and grits. I'm going to get the octopus and I'm going to get, you know, whatever <clears throat> you want everybody to have access to all of these things, because the more that you share, the more it elevates. Uh, your dining experience course, like it's yeah. it, it, it's stellar like sometimes like describing a food i get emotional for two reasons one because it's just that great and two i know i'll never be that good so that's why i'm like don't call me <laughs> chef anymore. just call me chris my name's chris that's <laughs> just <good>. chef, <laughs> yeah no, that's a great um, plans, man yeah. yeah so that one opens in, in april and then right behind that we're reopening the el dorado ballroom which is a historic uh, venue in Houston, right at Emancipation in Elgin, built in 1936 by Anna Dupree and designed by John Biggers, who's an amazing, legendary artist. Uh, we partnered up with Project Row Houses to do a $10 million renovation on the building. So we'll have the ballroom itself, which is uh, the sound has been done by Generation to AB, who does House of Blues, White Oak Music Hall. Like it's like awesome. since 1937 class, but 2030 sound. Okay. Um, and beneath it, we're going to have a market to where we, uh, you know, we, we sell the vegetables that we grow with our nonprofit down in Kimberland, Texas, and also have a cafe component, our art gallery, a community center space. Um, and this is to open at the end of May. And we're trying to open it up big with Herbie Hancock or Robert Glasper coming down to be the opening talent. So that, that's going to be a really big one, too. That, that's great. I mean, I, I always pass through our area with Parrish, one of our buddies here at the station, when we pass going to maybe some restaurants down over in Third Ward, and I always wondered what El Dorado barroom is. He always like, look at El Dorado, they're doing something there. So now we know what, yeah, what's going yeah. on there. So I'll, I'll let them know. Um, yeah, let them know. <laughs> so your approach to uh, sustainability has become a big deal. We even saw a photo of you and Biden, uh, with the Bidens in the kitchen. Uh, why is that so important to you? Oh, uh, well, I mean, because what we do, um, and the sustainability is not just, you know, the, for the planet, it's for the community as well. Um, everything that we do is, is rooted in the community. And we, we found over time and, you know, time and time again, that any kind of investment in the community will ultimately be reciprocated by the community. Um, and so we can take that same approach to <clears throat> earth, right? Like uh, with global warming, food waste is the number three contributor to global warming, which means the industry that I'm in is the number one contributor to the number three contributor to global warming. So what we've done is try, well, we're, we're, we've established a model that we're actually, we've implemented this model to where we are trying to shrink our footprint. <clears throat> so what that means is we take all of our waste, all waste from the, uh, all food waste, 
and com compostables from, from um, the restaurant and our production kitchen and ultimately late August in El Dorado Ballroom. And we've partnered up with Moonshot the Composters who come pick everything up and they, uh, they take it over to Nature's Way and they compost it. With the odds and ends, the bits from our, from our, when we're doing production, like collard green stems or pieces of tomatoes or whatever it is, we then take that and we put that in our fermentation labs where we make these beautiful pickles um, and shelf-stable products that are ready for our community. God forbid another Yuri or Harvey or whatever you want to call it comes in. Um, we have those products ready. Another reason why we do that is because it's, we're giving our partners or the people who work with us a full education in the culinary arts from seed to harvest to large-scale production to responsible disposal. Um, so yeah, it's, and, and also offering jobs to the people in these communities because food insecurity is still a real thing. And the sustainable model not only gives them education, but it gives them direct access to these ingredients that are so important. And if we find that the more you have your hands in it, the more you appreciate it, the more you're more comfortable with it, the more you utilize it. Well, it looks like our, our buddy Benji lost his connection, Chris. So I'll be taking over for it. Why not? Everything's going crazy today with technical problems. Um, but I wanted to, uh, you know, it's funny. You talk about late August and talk about the Sears catalog. And you're probably old enough to remember when the Sears catalog used to come out and be delivered. It was a big deal. And I remember as a kid, I imagine it would be in late August, grabbing that catalog and a pen and going and circling all the toys that I wanted. You know, of course, I wound up closed. But you know, hey, at least I got a chance to shot you know a shot at that. Yeah, yeah. Now that's exactly what I was saying earlier. Like uh, I, my my memory was, we signed the whole book. We circled everything. And oh yeah, give yeah. Parents, give your parents four months to disappoint you because you're only going to get one. Or two <laughs> that is the best way to put it, Chris. I'm excited about your new project. Sounds like you got a lot going on. We wish you continued success, and we thank you for being a guest with us on Up to the Minute this morning. My pleasure. Thanks, Chris. Take care. You as well. All right. We're going to move on and uh, head, head on out to the Central College. And uh, we've got a special guest joining us now, HCC Central Community Outreach Communicator or co Coordinator and former H uh, KPRC Lifestyle Reporter, Joe Sams, joining us on the show. Joe, good to see you. Good to see you guys as well. It is such a pleasure to be here and such a pleasure to also hear from chef there because i absolutely love him and we have done so many things together so i'm glad to see how he's working in the community yeah he's doing a lot of great stuff right now joe um so you made a transition which i can relate to and i'm going to ask you what it was like for you but i can tell people always would say what was it like leaving news and i literally would tell them because i feel this way it took me about a year to decompress from the television news world into getting into like the corporate world. Uh, I went into the corporate world before I came to HCC. And you know, it, it's hard to explain to people because the TV news industry is so intense. You're always working, you're always doing something. Have you had a chance to just catch up, breathe and enjoy your weekends and days off? Yeah, I love the fact that I've been able to do that because that was much needed. That was actually one of the reasons why I decided to leave TV because you're so invested in the community. You're so invested in other people's stories and making sure that the community receives the information that they need. So that means sometimes working 24-7. So yeah. it feels awesome now, and I know you understand this as well. It feels awesome to just be able to head down to Buffalo Bayou Park and, and yeah. take the dogs out and and have them go out on a walk or run with me and not have to always be in that constant get on TV mode and, and rush to get these stories and have the best stories yeah. for the community. So it's been good. I've been able to relax. I've been able to enjoy life and I've been able to enjoy this position here at HCC. And let's uh, explain to folks what a community outreach coordinator does so they can get an idea. Um, obviously, you use your talents from news because you're still a spokesperson to the community uh, for HCC Central, though. Maybe you can give us an idea of what, uh, what it looks like for you now with your job role. You're absolutely right. So if you think about what we do on TV, you just take away the TV aspect of it all. So we're not going live. We're not going to be in front of the camera, but we are still doing that hard ground work on what we've done in television. We're going out, we're meeting with the community, we're learning about their stories and their interests, and we're using that to apply to how can we help you 
at Houston Community College, taking those skills, taking those stories that they're telling us and finding the right programs to fit them in with Houston Community College, but also sharing with them the stories of Houston Community College, what's happening there on yeah. campus, what are our students doing, what are they doing now that they've graduated and move forward in their careers. They all have stories as to why they chose to go to HCC and what happened after they finished their, their, their certification program or their degree program. So those are great stories that we can still utilize and tell to our community and also be a part of the community at different events, festivals, concerts. I get to set up my table and all of my promotional items to head out yeah. there and really share with the community everything that HCC has. So it's everything that you do as a TV or journalist, just without the TV aspect. <laughs> yeah, well, well, we'll help you out with that. We'll get, we'll put you to work with the TV aspect here. <laughs> but let's talk about um, HCC Central. You know, one thing I learned when I came to HCC, I guess it's been a little over 10 years now, but um, I learned each college has its own identity and its own nuances, its own student body, and the communities are different. We're not all sizes for everyone. Each college has its own identity. What have you learned about HCC Central since you've been there? I love HCC Central. When I first moved to Houston, I decided to get an apartment in the Midtown area because I wanted to be close to the third ward area as well, which is a historic area in Houston, Texas. And that's the areas that we service at the Houston Community College Central Campus. We service the Midtown area, we service downtown students, people that are, it's easy for them to find a way to that campus. It's a beautiful campus as well. And those yeah. people that are in the historic third ward, which is, which is what was very special to me because education was not a high standard there in that community. So we wanted to make sure that we're located in an area that's giving access to those people who may have not thought of higher education before. So that was so special to me because I know my journey within higher education was important. So I want to also share that with those people within the communities that we service and in those areas that we service here at Houston Community College Central Campus. What are some of the accomplishments that you've been excited about since uh, starting this new position? It has been a whirlwind time. I can tell you right now, we've done so much. We've had our solar energy presentation and event, which was great because we were able to partner up with Green Mountain Energy, which I'm sure you know is a huge yeah. industry, huge business here and organization here in Houston, Texas. They do a lot of things with the Discovery Green area, and we were able to partner up with them so that they can help us put a solar lab on our South Campus. And that's going to be great because it's opening up another area of industries and careers for those people that may not look for that type of career, but solar energy is moving so fast. And that was something that we implemented here at Central Campus and at South Campus. Also with our town halls, we were able to accomplish a great town hall section as well as some great events that we've done here at Houston Community College Central Campus for World Homeless Day. We were able to work with the Covenant House Texas and get some of their residents to come to our campus, see the beautiful campus, see the programs that they offer, but also they were able to receive free haircuts from our barbering students. Yeah. So that was absolutely amazing. They were able to see the students in action and being that they were so closely related to age, they were able to also enjoy the interactions between each other. So those are some of the big accomplishments that we've had so far at Houston Community College Central, just really focusing on community and making sure that we're letting them know that we're accessible to you and we're here in the area to service. You know, you mentioned the solar energy program. We've had a reoccurring guest who went through your program. His, you may be familiar with him. His name is uh, Bill Littlejohn, and he's a retired yes. judge, 79 years old. He was on the show last week. <laughs> Incredible story. This guy's learning things at HCC. He's learned the solar energy program, and he raises money for trips over to Liberia, where mm -hmm. he establishes it over there to teach people to, um, you know, implement and solar energy. It's an incredible story. So that program mm -hmm. itself has got some accolades. Absolutely. And I'm glad you mentioned that because it does not matter about age. You can still learn something new and apply yeah. it to something great. And that's what I love because we've had some students that are in our fashion merchandising program. And we just had a huge fashion show at our central campus. And some of the best designs came from some of our older students who thought that they were going to be done with higher education, but then they came back 
and really invest into their passion and what motivates them. And the work that came out of that passion and skill and creativity was absolutely astonishing. So I really do love seeing that. And that's another inspiration and motivation as to why I wanted to come here to HCC and work. Such a great community. Uh, uh, we've only got a couple minutes left, but upcoming events you guys have coming up, you want to mention? Yes, I do want to invite everyone to our, and we're going to talk about this more, but I do want to invite everyone to our Black History Month resource fair that's going to also be happening on Central Campus. We have over 50 different organizations, nonprofits, businesses that are going to be offering their services to not only the students, but to the community as well. So it's a free event. It's going to be happening on February 23rd from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at the W.W. Horman building. It's gonna be absolutely wonderful. So we wanna make sure everybody takes part in that there. We're gonna have the flyer on our website. We also have the flyer on our social media page so people can go there for more information or they can contact me if they wanna come and check it out. So one one last thing, I know uh, uh, I know when I left TV news, I was like, I'm never going back to TV news. No, not that <laughs> again. But I find myself throughout my career since then, uh, always returning into the TV realm. Any thoughts for your future that uh, you may want to get back on TV or or do more uh, in the television realm? Yeah, we, you know, I still work with my agent right now, and he's still sending me so many different opportunities all over. Houston is home for me now, so I'm yeah. definitely looking and talking to people that are in the area that are interested in bringing me back on TV. I'm still going to be taking a break and enjoying my time now away from yeah. TV and really looking forward to investing everything I have into HCC. But, you know, the future holds a lot of different things. So sure. if I, I won't I won't put a, a, a roadblock on it, but we'll just say we'll we'll put a pause on it for now. We'll, we'll think about that later down the road. <laughs> Well, Joe, we've always got work for you. So just let us know when you when you get itching to get back on uh, some uh, broadcasting. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll definitely hit you guys up. Joe, we appreciate you being here on the show. Congratulations on your position as HCC Central's Community Outreach Coordinator. Uh, I know they're proud to have you there. We'll have uh, information on all the events you talked about in our post after the show. Have a good day. Awesome. You guys do the same. Have a good one. Thanks, Joe. All right, we've got a few announcements to get through the show. Uh, Benji, are you back on board? I know you were having some technical issues. Yeah, Norman, Zoom just like logged out or whatever. Yeah, why well, not? Everything's logged out today. Yeah, but, every, yeah, today's the day for problems. Uh, okay, Veteran Leadership Program for Personal Growth. Why don't you tell us all about that? Yeah, so uh, the Veteran Leadership Program for Personal Growth, as part of learning about and achieving their personal growth potential, veterans will receive a premium executive package offered at no fee to veteran members, complimentary assessment and course materials, and be able to draft and execute our personal development action plan. This will take place today uh, from 5 to 9 p.m. at the HCC Southwest Missouri City campus. Uh, if you want any more information, check the post after the show for a link to register. Okay, if you need digital IT answers, check this info session out. Uh, if you need more information on a program offered through the DIT Center of uh, Excellence, need help deciding on a program, join the Dean of Digital and Information Technology for a useful and resourceful information session to help you guide, help guide you and answer all your questions. Uh, it happens from 1030 a.m. to 1230 p.m. this coming Thursday. February the 9th. It is virtual. We'll have a link in our post after the show so you can register. And it's that time again. Several universities are looking to recruit our students. Yeah, university campus visits at the HCC Northline uh, campus is hosting several universities this month to visit with students about transferring opportunities. Coming up are on Monday, February 13th from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. You'll have Texas Tech and Teach Fast Track. And then Tuesday, February 14th, the next day, uh, from 10 a.m. to noon, you'll have U of H Downtown Preview Day. More will be held later this month. Just check out the post after the show for an email uh, for more info. Okay, we're running out of time. I want to jump on down and talk about registration because next week, the second start semester kicks off. It begins February the 13th. You want to sign up before then. You can get a full semester in in a shorter time. As we get further along in the semester, you know, um, the sessions get very condensed. You're still taking the same credit hours in a shorter amount of time. You can still do it. We have five ways to learn, but sign up today. Go to hccs.edu slash apply. Tomorrow on the show, 
president of our online college, Dr. Ford Fisher joins us. She'll be here for the show. And then later, uh, Benji, let's see, we'll have a Jeopardy contestant in the HCC family. And he'll be here with his wife, who is actually an HCC faculty member. Last month was so close for him. We'll tell you what happened on Jeopardy when he was a contestant, all that and more. So that'll be fascinating. All right, Benji, go, uh, you know, have your mangoes and your Cholula. There you go. Um, so you've got a full day ahead of you from your undisclosed location at your girlfriend's. And uh, we will see you next week on the show. You're back next week, right? Yeah, I will be back. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Thanks for joining us, folks. We'll see you tomorrow live, hopefully 10 a.m. with Ups in a Minute.